Hi, I'm Darren Macri of Blue Nest. We're building New Jersey's very first internationally certified passive house, designed by River Architects. It is a modern take on your classic farmhouse form. There was a house here originally, and we took it down to the foundation walls and built a new from there. This is our wall section. Drywall, then we have two by four, 16 on center structure. Then we go to plywood. So it's an OSB that's taped tight with uh, the Tescom Vanna tape. Then we go Larson truss, 12 inch Larson truss that we built here on site. And then tape type Mento, one by threes, siding, and that's our wall. We dense pack it all with cellulose and give ourselves a nice wall of R45. So when we started this project, there was a house here. We knocked down the house, but we kept the existing foundation walls. Came up those walls with a, a grifflin, a polyethylene material that's reinforced. Uh, so it's the grifflin T65. We stuccoed the walls and uh, and then we caulked the top of the stucco to the grifflin and made that whole wall a lot more tight. Below me right now is the basement. But over here, is the crawl space. Right here is that fabric that comes up the rim board, flops over, gets taped to this subfloor. We uh, have gotten down to 0 0.63, and that was before the Mento. We haven't tested since our Mento's gone on yet, and we su suspect when the Mento is finished, we should be uh, considerably tighter. The Mento is super beefy. All you have to do is touch it to know it. And the cellulose itself has been treated with boric acid naturally, which makes it fire resistant, uh, mold resistant and insect resistant. We have these Larson trusses which we built here on site and they were relatively easy to build. We just set up a jig and we cut two by six, we ripped the two by sixes and then we taped them with Tyvac to, uh, as a holder for the cellulose, uh, which is probably the best use of Tyvac. Would I use this Larson truss again? Well, I wouldn't say no, but I would say I'm interested in maybe doing the uh, stand-up TGI method. Even though we had a jig, there is, you know, discrepancies of a quarter of an inch here and there sometimes. And so uh, I think it would be nicer to have something that, that like the TGI, which uh, would become imperfect. Essential to a passive house are its windows. They're intis windows and they have three gaskets for air tightness, warm edge spacers and uh, they open up with multiple locking points, lock in there nice and snug. In Therm we've discovered that we shouldn't have our windows sitting here on our structure. We want them out on our insulation layer. So our windows are out on the insulation layer and to install them we use clips very easy, they snap right into the frame and then, and then you screw them back into the structure. And then we also actually screw through the frames as well uh, to make them extra secure. Then uh, shimmed where needed and foamed the, uh, the gap and then, and then taped it all with the Tescon Vanna. We built these sleeves, these sleeves that extend out for our um, window install. We built them out of plywood. On the end grain, you could see clear from the inside to the outside of the building because there are spots where the plywood didn't match up perfectly, that there wasn't enough glue. The plywood does get wrapped in our Mento Plus, so it would have been fine, but we wanted to make sure that we had our air tightness before we actually got to the Mento Plus stage. And so we taped all the end grains of the plywood to give ourselves that extra protection. We want to back vent our siding. So we have this venting down here, which is an insect screen, and then the air travels up and comes back out uh, with, an in, with our insect screen here. And this uh, is repeated at the, uh, on the roof line and below and above all windows. So Passive House really is all about sequencing, and the air barrier never goes on vacation. So everybody, every step of the way, is responsible for the air barrier and has got to be thinking about air barrier. So here we got a, uh, a ceiling bar box for a, a light fixture that will be on the back of the deck. What you want to do here is cut a piece of Mento 
and put the bar box on with the with the with the mento there and leave some slack hanging so that you can come back and and tape it all up and make this airtight and then you just tape the cable you're not trying to tape the box and make the box airtight you're just taping the cable your biggest energy load in a passive house is your water heating and to minimize our water heating we chose to go with a manifold system and which means we have all our hot water pipes getting home run back to the water heater so we're not you're not draining all the pipes that you've heated up and paid for uh, we are just we're going to empty out just the one pipe that goes from the shower back to the water heater this also allows us to actually reduce the size of our pipes uh, so for all our sinks we're three-eighths and for our shower bathtub we're half inch one other big savings is uh, in energy is using the PEX tubing because we're allowed to do nice wide sweeps with the packs very easily. You lose a lot of energy in those right angles. And uh, the PEX is less conductive than copper. Here she is, the lungs of our house, delivering us beautiful fresh air that gets preconditioned by the extracted uh, stale air. Uh, the Zender 550. Uh, I can't wait to turn her on. And, and feel the benefits. Hear that? That's the sound of a house becoming a passive house. That's our wall getting dense packed with, with 12 inches of cellulose. Bringing us from an R1 with the plywood to an R45. This would be a great bed. It would be a great bed because, like, especially if you're a bed wetter, uh, I mean, you got the Mento. It's got less chemicals in it than than any mattress we're sleeping in on right now. Oh well, we're gonna get reclaimed floors, and I've got these doorknobs from a barn in Vermont. The building materials is really only uh, ten percent of the life story, uh, life energy story of of your building. You know, they'd be fine if you if dead baby seals had a high R value. You can just stuff all those dead baby seals right into your wall, you know? Uh, but, well, essential to a passive house are its windows. And these triple brainers, oh, okay. And then they also do this. Oh no! They, they tilt. You could also do them, use them like this. Hey Tony, come in for dinner! <laughs> I went a little bit nutso and started uh, putting little beads of foam uh, all along the uh, structure here. Now, it's not a lot of foam. It's just 10 cans. So, Ken, take it easy, alright? Here she is, the lungs of our house. This is our ERV, the lungs of our house. This is the lungs of our house. This is the uh, this is, mm -hmm. this is the ERV, the lungs of our house. I think a lot of people won't get it. Yeah. Because I didn't get it. Yeah.